welcome to Punchlines. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Frank Nicotero, longtime comedian, lifelong sports fan. And today's show, well, we have a couple experts here today. We're going to help you make more money than this guy won, who had a chance to win hundreds, maybe thousands, but this dude only made 50 bucks. This will come clear once you see what happens here. So here's a dude. All right, so at 50 bucks for every free throw he makes, Alex. Ooh. And he starts out, yeah, he starts off cold. You know, you got to yeah. get used. You know, it's a new rim. And Come luckily on. Matt is I, I already am going to fall. So he's, <laughs> he still hasn't hit one. And none. I think that's about, oh, we got one. 50 bucks. And will he double it to 100? 10 seconds left. And my man finishes with 50 bucks. That's it. That's all he got. Uh, I mean, how you many got a shots chance. did he take? Uh, you figure it was forty-five seconds. He could have won four or five hundred. That's all he got. Uh, well, here, you know, it's Wednesday, so hosting the show is a woman who Alicia Keys wrote a song about because this girl is on fire. Sports betting analyst very Alex good, White very good. with two E's. Alex White with two E's. If you're following her on X, formerly known as Twitter, Alex, what is your record the past few weeks? So, well, since Saturday, yeah, since since Saturday, Saturday, 22 and 8, feeling... 22 and 8, like like I said, she is on (laughs) fire. But I'm not alone, there's somebody else who's been doing I know, and he's sitting in the producer's chair today, a man who co-hosts Sports by the Book on Mondays and Tuesdays, or is that changing? We don't know, how's that working out? Monday, Tuesday for now, TBD this time of year. There you go, he's also, last night when I called him, he he answered the phone, he's like, hey, I'm doing baseball play-by-play for UNLV right now, I forgot. So not only Matt and Everett sitting in for Ryan, there we go, man. Yeah, happy to be with you guys. Yeah, Alex... Mentioned it. I'm hot as well on college basketball alone, eight and two in my last 10 on uh, street plays. So 30 and 10 collectively. Something like that, yeah. These two people. And uh, we're going to talk about what I had last night. But anyway. um, Oh, by the way, how how much? That guy had 45 seconds. I think he took about 22 shots. At least, yeah. He made one. How many do you think you'd make in 45 seconds? That was Shaq esque, his performance from the free throw line. Um, I, in, in 45 seconds? 45 seconds, I yeah. could, like, I feel like I'd get eight. So you, you assume, you know, one every other second, you yeah. know, one every two yeah, seconds, right. you're getting up 20 plus shots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I hit 50, you hit 50%, you're making 500 bucks. That's not quite hack a, hack a Frank level. Exactly. But, better but than short that guy. white guys, it's like a Mark Price kind of thing. Remember Mark Price yeah. for the Cavaliers? I think his career free throw percentage was the 90 or 92. I think he has the record. Not too bad. Yeah. Because, uh, like, 90%, were you a good free throw shooter? I was. Yeah? yeah. I think I could have made at least six. At least six? Yeah. yeah. That's 300 bucks. <laughs> I mean, that's pathetic. And the guy's got a Giannis Antetokounmpo yeah. shirt on. Uh, well, you know. I don't know if Giannis would shoot much better from the yeah, line. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say Giannis is <laughs> I, no- I noticed I pronounced his name correctly, Giannis. Very good. Now, I really took my time pronouncing it correctly because our boss, Chris Andrews, is back in the house at the South Point, took a couple-week vacation, he went off. Up to visit, uh, you know, his uh, daughter and his grandkids up in Montana. He's back, and we believe Chris will be stopping by. Yep, uh, right at the end of the show. But very cool that stopping by is uh, someone that Alex knows via the video, former big leaguer, and you see him on the Major League uh, M- Major League Baseball Network. How about MLB Network? Well, Xavier cool. Scruggs will be here to talk some spring training, talk about his time in the major leagues. We have all sorts of questions, and he went to school with you. Yes, played at UNLV, All-American at UNLV, yeah. so we're excited. And now he, so once he got done playing, he started a podcast immediately. Um, I really think it was like a two-man show, him and his wife just getting it going, and, yeah. and then got picked up by MLB Network. You see him on ESPN, he's covered the Home Run Derby, so yeah. it should be fun. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. Well, we're looking forward to Xavier Scruggs, and just to, just to talk about it next week, Full base, full baseball week. Oh. Uh, we have Denny Nagel flying in. He's going to be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've already got Sean Casey booked. We've got Hall of Famer John Smoltz booked. We have actor Caden Jonathan Silverman from Weekend at Bernie's. Good friend of Danny's. He's going to be on the show. You won't be here on Tuesday, will you? I'll be here. He's coming. He'll be here. He will be here. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. So I think Jonathan's booked on Tuesday. So I'm going to. You're going to have a chance to ask him a question about Weekend at Bernie's which is right now your favorite film currently. So have a question ready for him about Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, I wanted to say you guys are on fire, 30 and 10 between the two of you, 22 and 8 for Alex. I, yesterday on the show, hammered home the idea that everyone should take the Cleveland Cavaliers. Okay, now, I mean, I don't, look, they were, eight and, they were getting eight and a half at home. Celtics are great. Celtics also coming off that pounding of Golden State. Boston was due for a little bit of a letdown. Now, 
Donovan Mitchell was out for Cleveland, but I said on the show, I said to special night in Cleveland, two Ohio boys, two future Hall of Famers coming back for bobblehead night. It was Travis and Jason Kelsey. I'm saying if this crowd isn't more amped for that. So I'm at home yesterday. I put on the game. What was the score? It was like Celtics were up by 19, 19 points. Yeah. They're up by 19. I'm like, oh, jeez. I'm going to hear it from the live comments tomorrow. But hey, nice picnic, Katero. Stick to Ben Overs. Then Reno Paul goes, oh, my God, the Cavaliers won. I should have listened to you. I'm like, they won? I'm like, they won? They won? I was doing Eddie Murphy from Delirious. But yeah, they won. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, they won. So I'm 1-0 in my NBA Moneyline picks uh, on this show. Very I don't think good. I've That's where you done. start. Got to start somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, here's a look, look at this graphic that uh, that Matt and Everett found. What does that say, Matt? In the fourth quarter, fourth who is quarter, that? Dwayne, that was, Dwayne uh, Wade played for the Cavaliers? Might as well be Dean Wade. <laughs> oh, Dean not Wade. Very he different. played like D. Wade. Yeah, he did. He played like a Hall of Famer. What yeah. did he do? First player since Kobe in December of 2002 to score 20 or more points in the fourth quarter, wow. shoot 100% from the field, outscore the entire opposing team, Jeez. and lead a 20-point or more comeback. That's phenomenal. First and time course, since Kobe. Black yeah. Mamba. Probably did it like a dozen times. But yeah. by the way, I'm going to go ahead and confess <laughs> on this show, I never heard of Dean Wade until right this moment. Uh, I had not until last night. <laughs> did you know of Dean Wade? No, and I feel like that has been the ongoing joke because every media outlet that I've heard oh, has really? said D Wade, and then they go, not who you're no, thinking, no, no, no. Yeah, Dean Wade. Well, then they had yeah. Max Struess hit that full court game winner last week, and these, these Cavs... Uh, obscure players are yeah. having a, a great couple of weeks. All right, where did Dean Wade go to college? Oh, uh, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna let's see. He's got a beard. I feel like right, uh, a W. I feel like a coastal. Car- uh, I feel like I'm gonna go. No, West Virginia. Where's he from? He's from uh, Kansas State. Wow, you were in the right conference. Kinda, yeah. Right, there you go. It was. It was in the, it was the Big Twelve, right? Well, as soon as you were saying coastal, I was like, couldn't be more opposite. <laughs> yeah, right. No more inland. More inland. Can keep going. I saw WVU for some reason, but anyway, I never heard of him from K State. But nope. Way to go, Dean Wade or what, Dean Wade? Yeah, yeah. D- the the D Wade. The Dean Wade. Um, and last night, where did you have anything going on? I, I, in sports by the book yesterday. Well, I said the energy in here was different, but yeah. everybody was happy because we had a, a lot of winners. So your Cavs also pits. Pitt, yeah. Pittsburgh, they covered. Pitt did win. I didn't touch it. They won. Nevada for our guy, Reno Paul, and also Chris Andrews <laughs> won. Yeah. Oklahoma beat Cincinnati for oh, Sean. That's Sean uh, Sp- North Carolina won for, for Ryan. Ryan. And the UNLV, UNLV yeah. Rebels beat SDSU. And you went to the game. Yeah, I was there in a suite. I grew up going to games at that arena, but had never been in a suite at the Thomas and Mack Center until last night. I was going to say, did you hear how he dropped that suite in there, Alex? He's like, I was at the game. In a suite at night, <laughs> and was uh, was it flowing in there? Did, is it like free stuff? Like- yeah, yeah. So I was uh, with the Aviators. That's my my full time gig, and they do a great job. Alex knows the the hospitality at Las Vegas Ballpark is second to none, and they uh, continue that energy. We'll say at the Thomas and Mack Center last night. Oh well, I had a be- I had a beverage over at the Aviator Stadium. Yeah. on Saturday. Yeah, when we found out we were rained out, the rain <laughs> it was rained out. Yes. I was like, psh, psh. there you yeah. go. Um, but by the way, so here's the reason I said I, I would take the Cavs was because it was Travis and Jason Kelsey bobblehead. Did you see the bobblehead? I didn't. It's pretty cool. All right, why don't we just roll the video here, Sean? We'll roll the video of the Kelsey's rolling it. Where they go now, it's like they show up. It's like the Beatles. And I think a lot of the female fans are like, Taylor Swift's going to come, Taylor. Taylor, take T-Swift, Taylor. Okay, there's the bobblehead. That's pretty badass. Whoever did that, social media, the pan up, that was great. You hear them talking about it. Way better than I was expecting. <laughs> What do you think about the New Balances? Um, I mean, you had to have me in the dad shoe. Unfortunately, I got the Monarchs on. It's ice cream style, Cleveland style, and then you got me in the Force. Come on, all white Force. I almost wore them, so it was perfect. And I wish I could do that. I can't do that. So thank you for making me look good. Go Cavs. So I, I think it's funny. One of them complaining that they had him in the dad shoes. The other complaining that they didn't have a chain on him. Right. And two, two very different uh, schools of thought yeah. from two guys that are very similar. And you're probably wondering, did they enjoy the game? Were they sitting court? They were courtside. And I think when Jason Kelsey's at any sporting event, for the rest of his life, yeah, for the rest of his life, Jason Kelsey's going to have to chug beers. He doesn't chug beers. Uh, I understand uh, that uh, Caden, uh, young Caden, and uh, Matt, we'll get the clip. It's coming. Don't worry. Okay, here they are. Here we go. So this is called what? Doing a beer? What do we call this? Deleting. It's it was not there, now anymore. it's not. 
Okay, so watch it. Watch Jason Kelsey's technique on the lab. One, two, gone. Travis, <laughs> a little messy on the shirt. Taylor Swift will throw it in the wash. That's okay. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. She does it yeah. Both of them. I mean, what's that? I said both of them unfazed. I, 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 unbelievable. And it's called deleting beers? Yeah, because it was there and then now it's not. You kids today, why can't it just be chugging? Uh, I don't know why. All right. Um, by the way, I just want to point this out. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard this. We didn't talk about this before the show. I woke up. I put on the local news. Did you hear what happened to a guy at the Venetian Hotel? I can Mr. only imagine. <laughs> Sean. Oh, Sean. <laughs> Sean apparently Sean, has. do you know about it? Yeah. Okay. Our director for t the day ends off today. Sean is filling in. Uh, this gentleman at the Venetian, which is one of my favorite. I'm trying, but you're doing great, Sean. This guy gets into his bed at the Venetian, and he gets stung by a scorpion in his testicles. Saw that. So I, I did see this. So uh, his room was comped before, so he must have been a high roller. And by the way, I, look, I, I, you know those cards they give out on the street? That's one of the things you can get here in Vegas. You can get a scorpion to sting you in the nuts. I'm just saying it's a thing. Apparently, maybe the, it's, you delete it. They delete <laughs> it. Deletes. Nuts. It's venom <laughs> in your. <laughs> but this guy is mad, and there was a clip of him on TMZ with his lawyer, and they, they didn't get an apology from the Venetian. Oh, I'm thinking it's because nowhere in the Venetian training handbook with the script for every problem is that one in there. There's probably like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, your bed wasn't made. Oh, I'm sorry. Maid service didn't come give you new towels. I don't know if you have to go to the index to flip in the back and go, scorpion stings privates. So anyway, this guy, I, I don't know what happened, but I just, that was the story I saw when I woke up today. And of course, I'm in bed watching that. I'm like, ah, scorpions. Yeah, you start feeling like there's one in there with you. So this what can they do to make it right? Is uh, there anything? Buffet? I mean, a uh, buffet or something? All I mean, you gotta do, do is get? come on as a guest on this show to get the buffet, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We need the scorpion guy, the scorpion king. We'll call him from now on. I like it. I was in Joshua Tree on my way over the summer, on my way to this job. The little stop off in Joshua Tree, and we uh, had this place. It had like a movie room. It was a converted garage, and they made it like a big screen in there. So I go on one, one morning, and I, want, I go in there to watch. Uh, I think I was finishing watching a Mission Impossible or something. And I walk in. And out from underneath the carpet comes a scorpion. That big. Giant one. And I scream, like, as you should, like, ah! So we have a, a guy comes out, an exterminator comes out, and uh, we can't find it. And I go, I, I, I go, it's under this spot of the carpet. So we lift it up. There it is. The guy takes the sticky paper and grabs it and gets him. He goes, wow, this is a big one. I'm like, yeah, I was the biggest scorpion I've ever seen. Now, if that stung you, oh, my God. I mean, so this guy, the reason this guy's suing is because he's traumatized that he's having trouble sleeping. I, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. It's not How much will he get for this? What's the over-under on what he can... Oh, it's seven figures. Get out of the venue. You think really? a million? I think if with the right lawyer in this town, I think anything's possible. <laughs> well, we'll keep you posted on that. And if the guy is still in town... Give us a call. Open invite. <laughs> we even got a buffet for you. We want you on. All right, so the live comment room is a flutter. And the reason is I opened it by saying today is March 6th. Today is March 6th, and uh, super fan of the show, B-Town Dummy, Christian Hanson, my buddy. I believe we have a picture of Christian. Yeah. It's going to kill me. This picture. Of <laughs> That's Christian and my dog, Scooby. There he is. Uh, happy birthday, Christian. Uh, he is 52 today. Born on the exact same day, exact same age as Shaquille O'Neal. And as you can tell by the picture, just as successful. <laughs> so there you go. For everyone in the chat room who's been wondering what B-Town Dummy looks like, ladies, there he is. Uh, you can hit him up on the chat room. We can make this like a dating site. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if we've ever had one woman in our chat room, but we have a lot of people. So happy birthday, B-Town Dummy. The reason I also bring up his birthday is right before I left for work today, I was going to come in extra, extra early, and the end of Rocky was on. So I'm like, okay, I got to watch the fight. So the fight ends around 1045. I noticed that HBO Signature is showing every Rocky movie. One, two, three, four, five, then Rocky Balboa. Okay. New segment I'm starting on the show for the live commenters right now. Question O the day. What is a better movie, Rocky 3 or Rocky 4? I will ask people in the studio if they have a preference to Rocky 3. Matt Never says Rocky Three. I don't know, Frank. She doesn't you know. know that. <laughs> uh, anyone else? They're two. They're all Katie three. Says three. Sean or Andrew? Either. Preference three or four? Uh, the correct answer is Rocky Three, but for some reason, I've had this argument with B Town Dummy for many years. 
Uh, uh, Sean's oh, Sean. Sean, you just lost it. Now the whole show's going to go to hell. He, Rocky Three, you get Mr. T twice, mm-hmm. and you get Hulk Hogan, Thunderlips. So you get three fights. Rocky Four, no Rocky theme, all rock and roll. It's like a music video. Yeah. He does fight Drago, but Rocky Three's better. I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, happy birthday to B-Town Dummy on March 6th, and to Shaquille O'Neal, if you're watching the show. Hey, Shaq. <laughs> And uh, so it's March 6th. How many days till March Madness? Well, according to frequent Sports by the Book guest Jim Root, Jim Root has a way of telling us how many days till March Madness. Did you see this? I did. Take I a love look. it. It looks so, like it's an annual thing, too. It's an annual thing he does because you, you're following Jim. Right. Uh, so, so am I. And apparently... Three man weave. He said it's... Uh, what's, what's the actual quote? We're down to officially one expired gallon of milk away. From the NCAA tournament because it expires on what's that say? That March? one says March twenty first. March twenty first. We'll be into that... the tournament by then. Yeah. So you better be chug that there. milk. I don't yeah. know. You, you got to win the Indy five hundred or whatever and chug it. But anyway, so one gallon of milk spoiled away. Uh, Jim Root's always on Sports by the Book. Who's on Sports by the Book today? Uh, Eli Hershkovitz. We're talking college basketball. He's been betting a lot of these tournaments that have already okay. started. Can you believe we're at conference tournament time? I don't. I saw a buzzer beater last night. I had said, In "What's the, the over under to Ryan of how many buzzer beaters we're going to see from now?" Until the end of the term. I said 14 and a half is what I placed it at. We had one last night. It was... Uh, uh, North Florida over Lipscomb. Lipscomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that was... Pre- so there's one. Yeah. Write it down. Keeping track. I thought that was a good number you made. That was, yeah. I, I thought of it out of, out, of, out of the blue. Yeah. So you guys are rubbing off on me. There you go. Alex Sharp and bookmaker Frank Nicotero. There you go. 14 and, uh, and a half. The, the Jacksonville Dolphins, they won again last night. They did. They beat the one seed. They Eastern did. Eastern Kentucky, yes. This so, was the game you had the other night against Kennesaw. Yes, You like correct. Jacksonville. I bet that game. So they're a 10 seed now who just knocked off the one seed, and March Madness has officially begun. March Madness has begun, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see a B-Town dummy. Uh, Scorpion thing. He did say damn you when we showed that picture. He did. Okay, that's what I just <laughs> want to make sure that he made sure he saw that picture. So right. why is there so many NBA b- uh, birthdays this week? You share one with Draymond Green. I'm Draymond Green. Jason um, Tatum was the day before. What happened nine Shaquille, months ago? Yeah, Shaquille June. O'Hale. It's June June of many a year ago. Well, you know what? The NBA season kind of ends in June. So, but that would have been their parents. That they, <laughs> I don't know. That's just called good foresight on their end. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good point, Alex. It's a good point. Uh, today is also National Oreo Day. Does anyone have any Oreos? Anyone holding? Not yet. Who's got, yo, who's got the O's, yo? Yo, who got O's? No one's got O's. I'm your O plug. <laughs> and today is also... National Dress Day, and I made this. Uh, I made this announcement to our sport. Would anyone wear a dress? I, Matt, did you wear a dress? I did. I'm. I'm not going to show it, but <laughs> <laughs> just imagine that Matt never is wearing a dress, and Alex is wearing. An Alex is dress. wearing a dress. She participated in the day, and it's spring. So there you go. Yeah, and it's black and white, like Oreos. So yeah. I got both. They one. look like tiny Oreos. <laughs> so she did two for one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God, Ryan's not. I still not- want you and Matt to make a bet, though, and the loser has to come oh, in here a in a dress because I think. All right. That well, I'll wear a dress. I like a good breeze. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer like a male romper, or like a like, like a kilt. A kilt. Very yeah, good. There you go. It's like a make a or like a like a denim dress, like, you know, down to the ankles, Amish style. Very good. I'm going romper. I'm I will going, wear a male. Oh, I'll oh. make a bet with someone. If I lose, I have to wear a male there's romper. There's a word for a male romper. There is. Frank. What is it? It's a romp him. A romp him instead of a romp her. That's the next bet I will make. Thank you to Alex bringing this up. I will make a bet anytime I, someone says, oh, we got a bet. I, if I lose, which I won't because I'm on fire. This you lost boy the last one. is on fire. Yeah. I will wear a romp him. A romp him. I like it. You did come in here dressed up like a Dalmatian. I so. was a Dalmatian on 101. That's true. And here's my thing about the 101 Dalmatian thing. Do I send it back to Amazon now that I've used it once? Or Are you ever going to use it again? Yeah, send it back. I would send it back. Yeah, it's 20 bucks, right? <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Send it back. And I, I'm not the kind of person who does that. Uh, our birthday boy, B-Town Dummy, he had to work on a show uh, somewhere over in uh, Europe, and he bought a bunch of gear from REI, a bunch of winter stuff, oh. came back, returned it. That's oh. right. Just ratted him out on Just his birthday. Just called him out. <laughs> That's what this day is for. Uh, it's uh, 1219. Uh, well, why don't we start post? We got a couple good posts. Yeah. Do we have the horns for post with punch sign? Sound the horns. Sean is on it! It's post time, ladies and gentlemen! Post time, post with punch signs, where we as a group, there's me, uh, there you go, and then the boxing gloves, that's like Rocky Three, right there, better Rocky movie. Has anyone commented on what's better? Okay, here we go, Bob Dell, Rocky Three is better, right there. Vince DeCola brought it in Rocky Four, Bob. 
Contains six of the best music videos. Nope. Rocky Ford, too many music montages. Thank you, Bob. If he dies, he dies. You know, Paul brought up. Ryan McCormick, never heard of Rocky. Ryan, are you supposed to be working another gig right now? He's full I, of it. Uh, really sounds like Frank wants to wear a dress, <laughs> says Reno Paul. Uh, well, wait a second. No, I don't like this one from B-Town Dummy. Punchlines crew, please inform me where I can send the mo my most embarrassing pictures of Frank Nicotero. He's messing with the wrong guy. And that was a la the Steve Martin voice from Trains, Planes, and Uh It's weird. We're an internet. We don't have any email addresses here. Sorry, Christian. I will say, B-Town <laughs> Dummy, the best way to go is to Google Frank Nicotero. He's done a great job over the years of uh, leaving us some, some trails of, of fun pictures. <laughs> Just anything but the Game of Life photos, which is when uh, might have been a little too heavy for myself. <laughs> we'll have to go pull a clip off of when you were on the show Rent. On the show what? On oh, the show debt. Rent. Debt. 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 Rent. You, you were rent. using it to pay your rent. I did get to pay my rent. Yeah, I did. Uh, debt, but I look good in that one. I'm okay with that. Uh, Joey B, there's no macaws. The macaws, I left the macaws out at the uh, Las Vegas Speedway. All right. Speaking of Las Vegas and the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and, you know, one of the signature places to go here in Las Vegas, there's one that they want to get here in Las Vegas. Now, we can talk about the Las Vegas baseball move here because Ryan's not here. I knew it. Yes. He gets very upset because why? He wants a team. He just doesn't want the He wants things. an original expansion team. Yes. He doesn't want a leftover from Oakland, a la the Raiders. Uh, so anyway, yesterday, they finally, the A's released the rendering of their 1.5 billion ballpark on the strip, and it's inspired by, a, by baseball pennants, like an actual baseball pennant. And it only holds like 30,000, which I think is smart. So look at the picture. Do you see these pictures? It's pretty cool. It's very cool. So the second one, the one in the upper right, they're actually going to like project the score. It won't even be an existing scoreboard. They'll just kind of like uh, Apple share it. Like, <laughs> just like, it's like uh, mirror their screens, but it'll be like, like that. And it's open-ended, but they can close it, I'm assuming, right? Allegedly. Right? Because, I mean, the games, it could be 100 degrees. I get every game's a night game, uh, apparently, right? That's that's what you guys do at the Aviator Ballpark, right? Correct. Every game's a night game, except for Sundays. We do have some Sunday day games, but really, up until what? Up until about June, and yeah. then so before it's not it gets terrible crazy. until then, then. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I and just, then at the end of the year, when it's nice, like yeah. September, October, like the last we get some, Sunday day game. This and and at the ballpark, you have the Major League Series this weekend, right? It's yes. the Asian, are you working that, you guys? Yep. Yeah, A's and Brewers this weekend. Are you there? I am not there. You're Matt, not there. Okay. Matt might be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. One of the Neverts. I might go for fun. Uh, two of yeah. us will be there, actually. Two Neverts will yep. be there. You get two Neverts for the price of one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> send pics to me. No, don't send them to Bob. Bob Del Pizzo has enough pictures of me. Bob Delmont. Uh, let's see here. When it comes to scorpions, the bigger the better. You know what? Jerry Trevino is downstairs. Jerry, who is uh, our, our jack of all trades. Um, oh, by the way, Jerry, I have a bone to pick with you. So I've been wanting Jerry to make a theme song, a new theme song for this show. So yesterday I finally remembered, and Jerry buried his head. It's because he did it for Gone Racing. So I, I yeah, oh, oh, Matt Nevered, mouth agape. Oh. Show Matt, 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 mouth agape. Do it again. <laughs> so I put on the beginning of Gone Racing, which I've watched. I've watched two episodes of Gone Racing, but I always pick it up in the middle. The theme kicks ass. <gasps> Jerry really is good. supremely musically talented. It, Jerry's amazing. I mean, follow Jerry. Uh, follow him on uh, TikTok. There's always him shredding on his guitar. It's in my, it's in my, uh, my algorithm now. But I heard it, but you know what? It does fit like racing because it's like, and the graphics, like speedometers, like pegging, yeah. you know? So it's, it fits. Could have it fit this show? We'll find out. <laughs> I think it could have. Maybe we, maybe, you know what? Later in the week, maybe we roll in that. Maybe we steal that music for one show, see what people think of it. Sean so it might have good. it back there, ready to go. I don't know. Do you have it? <laughs> we'll play it later. But anyway, Jerry's very talented. Jerry, I'll give you a hard time. But he said this. And this is what the exterminator said to me. When it comes to scorpions, the bigger the better. If a small one stings you, you don't keep it to yourself. Indiana Jones. Yes. He's quoting Indiana. Dr. Jones to you, by the way. But yeah, the bigger ones apparently are, are, are not as I know the, the, the reason, the actual reason. Why is that? It's because the They're smaller male? ones are younger, okay. and they don't know yet when to cut off the venom. So oh they just kind of dump it. It's the same thing with spiders. Smaller spiders just no. dump everything they got into you. Uh, the bigger <laughs> ones. Uh, we're right. talking spiders and scorpions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, have you ever seen a scorpion? I have. Where? Uh, like, I mean, Vegas has scorpions. That's true. There he is. Oh, so I, it was in my living room. I've, I've seen scorpions. I killed one in my living room last year, too. Yeah. I had a kid I went to school with, and he came from like uh, India or something. I remember he was in grade school. He goes, Oh, yeah, my dad used to have to kill cobras at our house. I'm like, Okay. I'm I would done. just leave. Yeah. I would just, no. I would, I would die. Uh, cobras are 
Shouldn't be saying this on the air, but probably the thing I hate the most. All right. Uh, Jerry Trevino, Rocky Four is so much fun, but three is so good. I've never sneezed in 104 shows. I thought I fought, I fought it. Oh, I there sneeze. you go. All right. So it's uh, 1225. Uh, let's get to Alex's picks now. I mean, we were going to do, uh, we showed the, the Las Vegas. We have more posts later. We have so much. We got Alex. We're going to get Alex's picks now. Then we got Xavier Scruggs. And I think Chris Andrews is stopping in. We have more videos. Pack show. So, Alex, why don't you take it out right now? 22 and 8 since Saturday. Woo. What do you so got much cooking pressure. tonight? <laughs> okay, so I have I have three that I really like that I want to give out on this show, and then Matt and I will be back at 3 p.m. Going through almost all of the college basketball okay. games tonight. But first off, I have Villanova. They're a small dog on the road playing Seton Hall. I just think they are the – well, they are the better team. I know they're yeah. the better team. They're 5-1 and one in their last six straight up and against the spread. Nova's holding teams to 60 points or less in their last five compared to 65 throughout the year and have their opponents, their uh, shooting percentage down to 37%. So I really like them to get this – win so okay. you can grab the one if you want or maybe even a little bit of that even money there yeah these two are four and five in the seating right now it doesn't really mean much because the top five get a double buy but they both still have a game after this as well so okay it'll be a good game okay so now no, i have an no. over for you frank you know LSU, i like overs frankie overs arkansas i like this over 154 and it's actually gone down so the market's going against me but the main thing with arkansas is they're very talented they just don't work well together and they're they don't have a good defense. So I think there's gonna be a lot of a lot of points in this one. They kept okay. up with Kentucky. They almost beat Kentucky yeah. on Saturday. <laughs> we were watching that game at the ballpark during the rain delay. We had it on. Yeah. How many points were in that game? Two hundred or so. And you would think there would be a regression, but they were on the road. Now they're going back at home. They shoot much better at home. So I like that over one fifty four. They actually shoot 46% from the field at home. Ooh, okay. Last but not least, I've got an under, and that oh, is no. SMU <laughs> and East Carolina. SMU is hosting. I like this one under that 141 and a half. The first game they played, SMU won 75-64. So it's close there, but SMU 10-5 and to the under at home, and then East Carolina has the worst offense in the AAC, but these two teams, they're three and four defensively in this conference. East Carolina, 19 and nine to the under on the year and four and one to the under in their last five. So defense has been playing very good. I love good it. With so this. recapping, you like Villanova, you like the LSU Arkansas over, it's around 154. What yes. did you have it at? Well, so it was it, 155 okay. when I saw last night. So it's actually gone down. So now we're jumping on the over Jump there. on it now. And then the SMU East Carolina under 140. 141 and a half. 141 and a half. Going it looks like that. it's 140 and a half here. So get it in now before it drops again. I or think no. that's, a yeah. good, that's a good point right there. Okay. 140 and a half. Don't go right. any lower 22 than that. 22 and 8. She's on fire. Uh, B-Town Dummy. Uh, or Joey B was asking, what's louder, a NASCAR race or a home game at Sci-Fi? Again, when I went out to the race... Everyone's telling me, you got you to gotta bring headphones, bro. I'm like, dude, I rock, all right? I saw Night Ranger two weeks ago at the Stratosphere. I know, what, I know how to headbang. Uh, it wasn't as loud as I thought. Um, SoFi is the most annoying place I've ever been to see a sporting event. Have you been to SoFi? I have not yet, no. It's un- uh, B-Town Dummy, birthday boy. We had tickets to a, uh, a, a Seattle Rams game. Seattle's his team. It was a Tuesday game at 5 p.m., because of COVID, it was yeah. a Monday night game that got pushed. So they had a game in L.A. at 5 o'clock. The worst traffic in the world, oh. a 5 o'clock start. So on a Tuesday. So it, we got there, and I've said this before on the show, at the two-minute warning of the first half. That's how long. The parking lot was a nightmare. We sit down. Oh and gosh. on every break, just DJ, loud music. We had a mariachi band right here. So the first break, it was like, ba ba that's the horns from Heartbreak Kid. I know Bob Dell knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Night Rangers headbag music, damn it, Mini Dark. Um, but the guy never shuts up. Every play, third, uh, fourth, uh, good, go. Whose house? Rams. Uh, it, I, again, uh, if it's too loud, you're too old. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was just annoying. It was just, it's too much. It was too much, too much. Uh, let's see. Ryan McCormick. Who's Ryan McCormick? He's new to the chat room. Uh, <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> so far, may be annoying, but that's the most impressive. It is an impressive stadium, Ryan's saying. I think Allegiant is better. And I'll tell you what, uh, when Jeff Pearls and I were at uh, Media Day for the Super Bowl, I thought the inside of Allegiant was super cool. Um, SoFi is nice. It has water outside. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, big deal. But, uh, you know, I saw the Stones there, saw McCartney there. It takes an hour and a half to get out of there. 
an hour and a half. And B Town Dummy would yeah. attest to this. I moved orange cones to create my own traffic lane, and and everyone was like, "That's our hero. Follow him." I'm a leader. Yeah, I took an Uber, and it, the line was ridiculous. And then there was a somebody waiting that we randomly just paid the hundred bucks, you know, instead <laughs> yeah. of waiting for the Uber and doing yeah. it on there. Oh, we well, after a concert, so you can make good money. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, we, uh, you catch it on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Way. It's between the Forum and SoFi is where the uh, Uber pickup is. But I finally got a hold of someone. They're like, come down to the main street. Come down to Century Boulevard, whatever. And she was waiting. And whisk us out of there. I tried to pay $100 for an Uber in Laramie, Wyoming last week. <laughs> what? Was, was it, a, was it a, a stagecoach or what was it? Uh, there was nothing. There was nothing. There, there was, was uh, none. We were, I was there engineering for UNLV basketball. Yeah, right. and they played at Wyoming last week. And you paid 100 No, I, I was trying you to. You tried. They were, zero Ubers after wow. like 10 p.m. in the entire city, if you want to call it that, of, uh, of Laramie. Like 30,000 people. So how did you get home? We walked. Come on. It was uh, me, the sports information director, a couple of other folks with the UNLV basketball team. And the, the best part is we were at one bar just hanging out. They said they closed at midnight. It was 10. They were like, yeah, guys, we're, we're going to shut uh, down. We were like, all right, no big deal. So we yeah. go to this other watering hole down the road, and four grown men, two of them we with both Uber and Lyft open, the other ones with just one, four of us for like two hours could not find, not that there was a long way or anything. They right. just did not exist. We couldn't get a ride. <laughs> when we were trying to, I don't know, find a taxi, we offered, the, the bartender offered. She's like, I get off at two. I can drive you guys back. Please. It was like a two and a half mile walk. So we ended up just hoofing it. Oh, there you go. And you saved a few bucks. Yeah, just like at SoFi. Just like what? <laughs> just like at SoFi. Exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, we have, uh, I, I see, are our, our, uh, we ready to go, Sean? Let's do it. Sean has, uh, uh, Sean is, <laughs> Sean's I wish falling you could apart see Sean here. right now. Uh, he has apart. tissue paper firmly implanted in his left nostril. Are you okay? Do you have a bloody nose? I hope that that's it. <laughs> oh my God. It's the altitude, Gindia. You're killing it, Sean. You're killing directing the show today. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring in our first guest. We can talk baseball. This is, uh, I mean, this is my passion. Me and Matt and Everett. Alex is a baseball fan as well. This gentleman, former major leaguer, and you've seen him on the MLB Network, Xavier Scruggs, ladies and gentlemen. Xavier. Alex, yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Appreciate up, you guys man? having me. Hey, listen, we were Jay. Yeah, thank you for being here. We were talking about how you were an All American at UNLV, and that's where Alex knows you from, is UNLV, right? Yes, I cheered there while he played. But I mean, he went on to do much better things. He was drafted by the Cardinals and then played uh, in Miami's organization, then overseas. And then the main question I want to get to for you, X, is then you got into podcasting, and now you're an analyst on all these major networks. So, what advice would you give to? Um, Maybe former players or anybody who's trying to pursue something in this industry. Yeah, well, first, it's it's great to be on here with you, Alex. It's crazy how far we go back uh, <laughs> as re as running rebels. But um, yeah, I, I appreciate the kind words, and it's it's been you know it's been fun. I think the one thing I would say is like you have to differentiate yourself, right? Like you have to figure out kind of where you fit in in a world that's full of media people, that's full of everybody reporting and everybody kind of having some specialty in in the sports media world. So just, uh, you know, what is something that you can that you can do to help differentiate yourself? And that's kind of something that I've always thought about. And what can you duplicate and replicate and create as much of uh, as fast as possible, faster than other people, too? So those are some things that I would tell, you know, athletes or anybody that's really trying to get into the industry and have some type of success. Plus, you just love being around the game, right? You just can't. Once you're, you know, baseball's born and you, you can't get out of it. So to be able to work in it after your playing career, that's got to be like that's that's the best, right? I mean, do you ever see yourself wanting to coach or do you like just staying behind the mic? No, the, the coaches are the, uh, just at the field way too long. Like I, I have to have some type of life. Like no, I, I would, when I was playing, I would remember like getting up to the field. Like it, we're already getting up to the field way earlier than the game, maybe five, <laughs> six hours before the game. The coaches are there eight, eight hours before the game, and then staying there a couple of hours after the game. So, like I have to have some type of life. No, so I couldn't be a coach. Okay. I do like coaching my kids, and but that's about the extent of it. Um, no, but yeah, you got to love the game. You got to enjoy it. Um, it, and I love just kind of what you guys are doing, right? Having conversations with people just about the game and different sports and just, you know, a athletics itself, you know? So that's the stuff that interests me as well. All right. So I want to have a conversation about something very important to me. I am a lifelong diehard pirates fan. I was born and raised. It's been rough. Yeah. I know <laughs> it's I'm been sorry. rough. 
But I saw Stop your <laughs> I saw your tweet the other day, and you got to observe in person O'Neill Cruz, who I feel as O'Neill Cruz goes, as will the Pirates. You said he looks like a tight end. Uh, I know he stole a base in his first game, which was our main concern after that awkward slide last year that put him out in April. What do you take yeah. away from seeing O'Neill Cruz in person? I mean, he's six seven. The guy's just a freak, right? Just, just an animal, um, and it, it doesn't make sense at all to me. That's why I tweeted <laughs> it out because I saw his, I saw his body up close, and I remember seeing him last year. But even this year, he's gotten bigger up top. Mm-hmm. He looks like an NFL tight end. But the thing is, like, he's got a smaller waist, so you can tell that he's so athletic with the lower half. He's able to be extremely fast, right? He's able to cover a lot of ground. Um, just doesn't look like a body that would play uh, at the shortstop position. Yeah. But, um, you know, to to his credit and to his hard work and, and coming back, like, he looks just as athletic as last year. He, he's obviously out for some vengeance. He missed yeah. all of last season, so – um, hopefully he can help the Pirates out. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough because obviously the Pirates are still in that rebuild phase. But he'll be a, he's gonna be a special player to watch for a while. Yeah, Xavier should be a, a unique season in Pittsburgh. I, I was the broadcaster for the Pirates uh, Single A affiliate in Bradenton in 2018 and 2019. I had O'Neill Cruz on that 2019 team, and I can tell you from experience wow. watching him uh, day in and day out, he is a, a ton of fun. And you see some you see some things that he does uh, that you never see from anybody else on the field. But Frank, I thought you were going a different direction. Initially, when you brought up the Pirates, you got to ask Xavier who he hit his one major league home run off of. Oh, wait. Okay. I know we were going to get to that. Yeah. Xavier, is it again? Was it against the Pirates? It was against the Pirates. And, Uh-oh. Yeah, it was. Chad, right. not so cool. Oh, Chad, cool. Oh, K U H L. Chad, cool. <laughs> but tell us about your major league home run. I, but we like we like these stories, all, obviously. Uh, oh, man. Take us back. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't get any better than the, the home run. Like, it, it, you just, the, the fact that you hit a ball <laughs> at a stadium in which you've been working your whole life to get to major league stadiums right and then to do it at pnc which is one of the most beautiful (laughs) stadiums in all of major league baseball and to see the ball like jump off the bat the way it did it never jumped off the bat ever ever like that in my (laughs) whole life the way that it, it like i didn't even feel it and then I remember running around the bases just like not even feeling my body. I just felt like I was on cloud nine. Um, Ichiro was actually on second base, so I knocked in Ichiro. Wow. Um, I came around third base, and then when I got home, dapped up Ichiro, uh, (laughs) dapped up Don Mattingly, and then Barry Bonds was my hitting coach at the (laughs) time too. So, like, you go into the dugout, Barry Bonds gives you a big big old hug. Like – just everything even surrounding the home run was surreal for me and just a, a moment that I'll, I'll never forget because you work your whole life for it. And then, Xavier, you were signed with the uh, – uh, where am I? The NC Dinos of the KBO played there for two years. You had 61 home runs in two years in Korea, so you, you, you found the power stroke there. I'm a big fan of the Asian professional leagues in general. Uh, what was it about the KBO that stood out to you, and what were some of your favorite experiences playing overseas? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Korean baseball is is something special. It, it actually, you know, Major League Baseball will play its first two games yeah. here pretty yeah. soon in Korea. So they'll get a good taste, a good taste of that. I'll actually be out there for that, too. So um, that'll be fun. But, you know, in, in Korea, I, I explain it like this. It's like a Duke versus North Carolina basketball game as far as the atmosphere at every single game. Like, the fans are just out of control. They're not on the phone. They're partying. They're drinking. (laughs) They're having a good time. They're, like, locked in on the game, and they understand what's going on in every single situation. Um, So there's just a different passion for it than there is in a lot of other places that you get. Um, Baseball was baseball, though. Like, getting to to play the game that I love was amazing. The, The tough part was just, like, getting used to the culture. Uh, But once I did, it was something that, uh, you know, just stuck with me. It was something that I was excited to be in. Uh, My first son was born in Korea. So that tells you a lot about how how much we enjoyed our time there. Uh, But, you know, one of the stories that I'll never forget is uh, actually we, we made the playoffs in our first year and I hit a game winning home run, I think in game one or game two of the playoffs. And after the game, like 
that the you, as as Americans, you're such a rock star over there. After the game, it took me two hours to get exactly a fourth of a mile, like a quarter of a mile, <laughs> just to walk home because because the fans like wanted to stay with me. Like they were like 200 fans just staying with me, not even asking for autographs, just want to walk with me all the way to my apartment in Korea. So it's just like the passion was amazing out there, and it's something that I'll never forget. Yeah. That's like me after a show here. I mean, I when I walk out of the studio, people follow me all the way to my car. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, you're used to that. <laughs> yeah. And my brother in Quebec, Quebec City was the exact same way, which was really cool. And he just retired this past year, too. But he says he'll always remember that as well. But, X, I want to get to a little sports betting because I know you're an expert. You've been breaking down every single team. But I want to start with the Cardinals and see what you think about this because right now they are the betting favorite to win the NL Central. Now, they finished last in that division last year. Are you a believer in this team that they can make that big of a jump this year I am a believer um you know I would I would definitely like those odds just because th- this is a team that went out and got three new starting pitchers now we do have to be careful because Sonny Gray just recently had a hamstring thing go on the other day but um when you bring in three starting pitchers and that was the one Achilles heel that you had last year they just couldn't cover innings and plus you bring in um the, the the second to Cy Young uh, winner and and Garrett Cole uh, Sonny Gray has what well, came in second so bringing in that type of pitcher um, is going to be a lot of impact like and, and that's one thing that the Cardinals need if they're able to stay in games when it comes from pitching from a pitching standpoint the offense can take off and I expect this offense to bounce back I expect young guys and Jordan Walker to be a guy that's going to have a lot of impact in this lineup. Um, you know, the same thing goes for Mason Wynn, who will play shortstop for this team as well as in his rookie season. So um, I- I'm excited for the bounce back. And I think it does happen just because a lot of things just went wrong for this team in every single category. And I can't see that happening again. And the NL Central isn't that strong of a division either. <laughs> it is not. It is yeah. not. Milwaukee traded away Colin Burns. I mean, the teams are weaker. Cubs didn't do much. They got Cody Bellinger and the Pirates. Well, we're waiting for the arrival of Paul Skeens uh, in June or July, hopefully. Because uh, I can't wait to watch him. I just can't wait to watch him in a He's big coming. league. Um, and, and Livy Dunn might be with him. So that's another, That's just a bonus. Um, so we're looking at, before we get to who you think might be uh, the World Series matchup here, uh, speaking of gambling stuff like Alex brought up, I'm intrigued by the home run title. And uh, Aaron Judge is a 6-1 to favorite right now. Otani at 7-1. to But the, the one down the list that I like a lot, Juan Soto, 18-1 to to win the home run championship. New City, Yankees, short porch in right field, and he signed a one-year deal. So he wants that mega deal. Why do I feel like that's a solid bet, Juan Soto? And how do you see him doing in New York with the pressures of the media there, et cetera? Yeah, I love the 18-1 to 1 with Juan Soto because I actually, literally, I just got back from Yankees camp, and I was talking to Juan Soto earlier today, and he just mentioned wow. that, and he's already mentioned this before, that his goal is to hit a home run in every stadium he plays in this year. <laughs> and and you can just tell that there's a different emphasis on power for him coming into this season, right? He knows going into a free agent year, power is where you make your money. And uh, we know he does a great job of getting on base, but I have a feeling that he's going to take more chances in, in trying to hit more home runs. And you think about in New York with that short porch to right, he's going to take advantage of that and being protected by Aaron Judge. So I I, I love that. I, I love those odds. I love the idea that you also have a team that, you know, they can create runs. They'll have an opportunity yeah. to do more. They have Alex Verdugo also in this lineup. DJ LeMahieu, as long as he stays healthy. Um, I, I honestly like both judges and Soto's odds uh, to be the home run leaders in their respective division. Yeah. What about okay. – um, I was looking at Mookie Betts, because, and, but I want your opinion. How do you think it affects him now? He'll be the leadoff, and he'll have Otani behind him, well, <laughs> as of right now, with – spring training but does that help or hurt him from where he was with his home runs last year yeah I I think it definitely helps him um (laughs) you know obviously it it, it's anytime you have Shohei Otani batting behind you the last thing people are going to want to do is walk you to get to Otani he's going to get a lot of pitches to hit and this is a guy that we know can take balls deep and and I think that you can never count out Mookie Betts, and he always finds a way to go through some really strong stretches through the season. 
Um, you know, the one thing with him is to just staying healthy. Like it, it's the same for a lot of these guys, but Mookie Betts has to stay healthy in for in order for him to put up the power numbers. He's going to be a great hitter no matter what, but he has to stay healthy to put up big power numbers, and we saw him do that last year. Yeah, he's. I, I love watching Mookie. I'm a Pirates fan. Dodgers are my second team. Their win total is 103 and a half right now. And that's, the, you know, they were a 100 win team and they added Otani. But I mean, this guy's only making two million this year. How good can Otani be? Ha ha ha. But uh, so who do you think, who do you like in the World Series coming out of the National League and American League? Uh, Atlanta's got a lot of pressure on them. Dodgers probably have the most pressure. And in the American League, it's so hard to repeat, as you know. Uh, what do you think about Texas? So who do you see coming out of each league? Yeah, it's hard for me to see Texas coming out of the American League without having Montgomery, Jordan Montgomery back. He was so good down the stretch. And I think ultimately he hasn't been signed yet, but I think ultimately we look at him probably going to the Red Sox or going to a team on the West Coast. Um, I just don't think Texas with the RSN situation is going to be paying the, the type of money Montgomery's looking for. Um, so for me, that that basically narrows it down to the Orioles and the Astros yeah. to me. I, I don't I don't quite think the Orioles are ready because they took a hit with Kyle Bradish going down early in spring training. Now, I know they got Corbin Burns, but Kyle Bradish goes down. He was their best pitcher last year. Um, so I, I look at the Astros, and it's a team that they, they just continue to do it over and over And they added and over Josh again. Hader, my God, yeah. <laughs> they, they add the game's best closer in the back end. So it's it's tough for me to not see them get back to another World Series. Last year, you think they were, you, you know, you think about it, they were one game away. So um, I see the Astros coming out of the America League. I think with the Dodgers adding Yamamoto from Japan and, and, and adding Tyler Glass Tyler now Glass from the now. Rays. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you think about adding another power guy in Teoscar Hernandez that'll play left field. They were kind of trying to figure out that left field situation for a couple of years now. Um, they've added so much firepower. It's, it's, it's finally, I think their time to ultimately get past the Braves, even in the regular season. And I think they get to the world series and, and we see them facing off against the Astros. And Xavier, last thing for you before we let you take off, nothing to do whatsoever with baseball. You graduated <laughs> from Poway High School in San Diego, the same high school as Mark and Tom from Blink-182, one of my top two or three favorite <laughs> bands. Uh, they're a little bit older than you. Did you know them? Slash, what was the history like at Poway High School knowing that Blink-182 was there? <laughs> Yeah, no, it was obviously cool, man. And, and especially when I was going to school there, they were like at the, the getting towards the peak of right. kind of what they were what they were doing. But no, I didn't know them personally. Uh, but it's always cool to be able to say like, you know, Blink-182. That's all that that's always going to be one of those bands that that people will will never forget kind of where they were at hearing their type of hearing their music right so i i just know that that was kind of a staple of my time in high school and, and even going into college man bleak 182 that's hey that's some good <laughs> stuff you you looked that up that. <laughs> good job hey xavier listen uh alex alex i know thank you yes, alex thank again. you so much we appreciate it xavier on the show where you're excellent we'll be checking out everything you do where can people follow you tell us your podcast and everything and social media Please. What do you got? Yeah, you can tap in on YouTube, show and go with X, uh, sit down with a lot of the players and, and guys in the industry today. Um, a lot of breaking down what the guys do. Like we don't get a lot of chances to hear guys break down their own video. So that's something I, I love to do. Um, but yeah, you can find me on socials, Xavier Scruggs. Um, I'm all over the place. TikTok. I'm doing the TikTok nice. thing too. So make sure you tap in with me. Are I you doing the Beyonce guys. dance yet for the Texas Hold'em yet? I'm not, no, I'm okay, not doing nope. the dance. Okay. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm strictly Come on. doing the baseball thing. Okay. Don't, don't, all right. don't put that on me, Frank. All right, okay. all right. By the way, in the live comments, Chad Cool says he's still mad at you. So there you go. That's I know. Uh, thank you, Xavier. Uh, we're going to take a two-minute break and get this. Chris Andrews will be here after the break. Thank you, Xavier. We'll be right back. South Point is also proud to provide a variety of relaxing amenities for the guests who want to be pampered. Soak up the sun and let your stress melt away in our lagoon-style paradise swimming pool. A relaxing getaway where you can bask in the desert sun and enjoy seasonal food and bar service poolside. And if you really want to escape, come to Spa Costa del Sur. From couple suites to a co-ed wet area, our spa caters to business and leisure travelers who want to unwind and elevate their senses. 
A visit to one of our spa's steam, sauna, or whirlpool treatment rooms will leave any guest feeling like they can take on the world. Our gaming amenities include over 60 table games and over 2,600 of the most popular slot and video poker machines. We have penny slots, including the popular Buffalo games and real machines like Wheel of Fortune, Triple Sevens, and Mega Bucks. If you prefer video poker, try Deuces Wild, Double Double Bonus, or a variety of multi-denomination games. Or try your hand at one of the most popular casino table games in the world, Blackjack. Don't let the game intimidate you. Blackjack, also known as 21, is both easy and fun. And our dealers are always happy to assist. And the best part, Blackjack always pays three to two. Next, check out the roulette tables. Roulette is one of the easiest casino games to learn and so much fun to play. It's a favorite of both beginners and seasoned players. In addition to blackjack and roulette, our casino pit features over 60 popular table games like Baccarat, Pie Gal Poker, Three Card Poker, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and Mississippi Stud. So get out of your room and come join in the fun. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. The Scorpion Man has not gotten back to us yet. I don't know if you heard that on the show, Chris. I didn't, no. There's a guy at the Venetian. He's suing the Venetian. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. trying to get him on the show. The really? <laughs> I don't know. But I, I didn't know if these... It was the first thing I woke up to in bed. I turned on the local news. Man bitten by Scorpion in bed at the Venetian. And of course, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, God, what's that? machine? That's a bed bug problem. That man. is a massive problem. Again, he, just, he didn't get an apology is what he's upset about. And I just said... I don't think there's a protocol for that in their handbook yeah. to say, oh, we're sorry for the scorpion in your bed. So I don't know. We don't know about that. But anyway, Chris Andrews is back, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't seen Chris in like two weeks. Yay! About two weeks, yeah. About two weeks. Yeah. And how was the vacation? Well, it really was great. I mean, yeah. I go to see my kids. I got two two daughters and a grandson up there. Right. You know, so I mean, it was fun. But of course, my wife, the way this trip came about, my wife, her best friend, had uh, an extra ticket to Hawaii. So my wife went to Hawaii for two <laughs> weeks, and I went to Montana. Well, <laughs> but you know, very very different. She had a blast. Yeah, uh, I don't think she met a pool boy or anything like that. At least not that I know of. And uh, I can't, and I got to see my kids and grandkids. Well, there so, you go. Bizarre. Then see, there you go. I, you know what? I once I was doing a show, asked a couple who was celebrating their fiftieth wedding anniversary. I said, "What's the key to lasting fifty years?" They said, "Separate vacations." Wow. Uh, we've done that occasionally. Wow. I mean, it's great to travel together, yeah. but sometimes you could use a two-week break. There you go. Uh, I know. We're twenty years this year. Tw so. <laughs> twenty years. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations yes. to you and Pam. I see you got an Iowa State shirt on. Iowa State, yeah. Alex has got the future on it. Are they playing today, I guess? Yeah, seven and a half point favorite, I think, last I looked. It's funny, I ran into an Iowa State fan. Okay. A guy wearing an Iowa State shirt. He goes, oh, hey. we just start talking a little bit. He says, boy, it looks like too big of a number. He says, I think I like BYU tonight. Ooh. Okay. So, oh, well, BYU is another fit. I'm a guy here in the sports book, guy, you know, makes, he bets, you know. Okay. I thought the number was right, but then you got to, I put seven a little bit of revenge on the Cyclones, because BYU did win the first one mm -hmm. in Provo, though. But So I stayed off of it, but yeah. I thought Not the number was right. a little hot tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, we've been following the uh, exploits of Joey Votto. Now, Joey Votto uh, yeah. killed the Pirates for years. Yeah. I, I, if you look at his numbers, the guy's like a Hall of Famer, borderline Hall of Famer. Borderline, on base yeah, percentage. Sure, I mean, yeah. he's won an MVP. So Joey Votto hasn't been signed. I know, yeah. That's weird. So we started with a clip of him in an automatic car wash, and he's all sad. I'm just say. Someone please sign me. Then he vowed not to return his shopping carts to a stall until he gets signed. Then yesterday, he posted a video of him shoving a cart not even close to the put away. And now uh, this is it here. So we have, this is Joey. Uh, and if you listen to what he says, he's saying he's not putting the carts away. Good day. Watch. He could return it right there. Nope. All right. There. <laughs> Asinine. Not doing it. He's not doing it. Is Someone's there like 30 general managers uh, in that parking lot? or uh, you know? I, I can't believe it. I mean, even the, the Reds. I mean, someone's got to take a chance on him. I think somebody will. He'll get signed for the veteran minimum. and uh, you Toronto. Know, he'll take his seven hundred grand and, and play for whoever. Um, yeah. Well, he has $200 million, I think, in the he's bank doing from just, that big contract. He's doing just fine. So he's not missing any, he's not missing any meals. But... Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, I just, I love it. He's always been funny. He's always been amusing. He's Canadian. Maybe he'll go play for Toronto. That's Did you ever see that website where the guy tracks people who don't put away they, their yes. shopping carts? I talked about, when we first yeah. saw this, I talked about this. Yeah. Neither Ryan or Alex, I think, had heard of this guy. He gets mad at people and he throws magnets on their car. Yeah, you're right, right. It's hysterical. Yeah. People, like, you know, I'm more hip than these guys. I yeah, know, you're, yeah. Chris, you're right. people. They, he get people run at him oh, and want to yeah. fight him and oh, get mad yeah. at him. Yeah, he's Have like, you gonna put your card away. They, well, it happened to Frank too. So. Yeah. Then he had to redo a video to show everybody I that he did. I don't his think we have away. it, but I, I did one day me at Target, and I I was being caught on camera, so I put the I put the card away. They generally ninety-eight percent of the time I do. <laughs> they say that the, the the shopping cart test, whether yes. or not you you put it back, is a test of how good you are as a person. Correct. Because there's no law that says you have to put it back. Right. right. But it's kind of just the right thing to do. Yes, I agree, and I do ninety-eight percent of the time. <laughs> but that Costco on St. Rose, that parking lot is a death trap, and I put it up on the rocks. And there's a kid that gets paid to come around and get him. I mean, come on. He always gets very defensive. Because <laughs> I, I didn't segment. do it like one time. Yeah. Remember Robert De Niro's test for a girlfriend? The the, the Bronx Tale, right? Yeah. Yeah. Chaz, well, you got a, the lock. Yeah, you open the door for her. Does she reach over and unlock? The, of course, we don't have That's, that anymore. Kids don't you know, know about that. Caden, um, do you know about a manual lock having to unlock a, a, the passenger Kay, There's door? no chance Caden has <laughs> ever seen a manual lock. No. No chance. I think we showed that clip on this show way back when we got started. Did we? At some point, either this show or Sports by the Book, I, don't I remember think it was, cutting yeah. that clip for something. Maybe we did. Chaz Palminteri, who wrote, yeah, right, he told you got you to open the door. Uh, well, first of all, you don't lean over. You, if you, you open the door for her, and then if she can lean over, yeah, that was that was a big key sign. Uh, great movie, by the way. And yeah. I was supposed to watch Oppenheimer last night, and I Ooh, did. Good one. Like, the Oscars are this Monday. Do you have a favorite? I know you like the holdovers a lot. Is there a movie that you liked a lot? I, I love the holdovers. It's great, I, right? Know, I mean, Money. Oppenheimer is great. You know, I haven't uh, watched that. Did you see Barbie? I did. Barbie's all right. I thought it was okay. It was okay. It was okay. I didn't love it. Did you see Barbie? No. <laughs> I thought it was okay. I went it's to funny. your list of uh, gambling movies first. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're, she's working on the list we compiled of gambling. Oh, okay. She watched Hard Eight, which is the Reno. Love Hard Eight. Yeah, that's your. Oh. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. I love Hard Eight. And I watched Rounders. I like Rounders. Those Rounders is so good. It's good. The yeah. original Rounders, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what uh, I like. Yeah. Yes. Matt Damon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the OG. Yeah. Like the original. Uh, He's not that. Okay. So uh, yeah, we were talking about baseball. I just want to remind everybody and, and Chris. So kindly, uh, Denny Nagel is coming out next week. You got Denny. Denny's staying here Denny's at the South Point. Out. He's coming out. He's already booked Sean Casey and John Smoltz confirmed and Jonathan Silverman. Oh, I forgot Jonathan to Silverman. touch base with him both. Today. Oh, I've yeah. Been, We're going to try I've been on the run both. today. It's you know, your just first day back. Yeah. Uh, and then the tur- it's tournament time soon. I yeah. mean, what else is going on in the sports book? I mean, it's busy for basketball. I'm just hockey. getting caught up. Man. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had a lot of futures to go through. And then, the, you know, my wife had broken her arm. I had to yeah. take her to the doctor. Yeah, and your cast is off too, yeah. Well, I, I never broke mine. I just yeah. sprained that, just trying to go without it. But her, she had a legit broke arm. I'm, yeah. she, oh, you have to take me to the doctor today at 10.50. Oh, great, because I don't have anything else to do today, you know. <laughs> Well, uh, Frank, He's, Chris has had a lot else going on as well. A new member of the Andrews oh, family. Yeah. What is this? Oh, oh, you got the dog. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Check it Tell out. us about this pup. What's Tell the name? Are we going to get videos of, of this pup well, daily? We yes. Have to. Well, yeah. Are you going to tweet and, and tweet a lot of pictures and videos? Probably not. Probably. <laughs> Tell us about who that is. That's Blue. Blue. My. Uh, so, you know, we lost very tragically. I lost my I great know. thing. You know, that was horrible. Uh, so since then, we've been thinking about getting another dog. So my daughter in Montana, she she <laughs> texted us. She got a dog from these people. Not like a puppy mill or anything like right, that. Right, like yeah. Legit it's in Montana. Breeders. Legit breeders. You know, so she sent us pictures. And right away, my wife, she said, they have. She said, well, <laughs> yeah. She said, I, we prefer to get a female because, you know, Getting a little older, and you know, it, it's, it might be a little hard to just because we still have Opie. Okay, you know, so she said, "Well, the run of the litter, female, but she's like a pistol." Oh. So we, you know, Jackie sent us pictures and all that. I said, "Yeah, get her." You know, yeah. so we got her. <laughs> so I mean, you know, once they show you the pictures, where you're not going to get, yeah, yeah forget done. about it. So anyway, that was part of my trip to Montana, was picking up the dog and bringing her back. There awesome. you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so right. girl, Blue. Blue. Blue, my girl. Her name's Blue. Blue. Now you know where we got the name Blue. I love you, Blue. From old school or? No. No. <laughs> uh, our first do- our dog that we have right now is Opie. Okay. We got from the Andy oh, Griffith. Oh, yeah, show. yeah, yeah. So we're trying. So <laughs> my wife would have named this one B for Aunt, Aunt B. B. Right, okay. But she says, I don't want you calling her Aunt B. Well, 
you know, I mean, of course I'm going to call her right. Andy. What do you think I'm going to call? He says, well, what other name? Well, Barney, if you go back one episode, <laughs> Barney has a dog and he names it Blue. Names it Blue. There so you go. how about we name her Blue? And so Barney's not Blue. a good girl named Fife. Oh. Fife wouldn't have been a good name either Blue, though. No, so I mean, Thelma Lou, that kind of doesn't yeah. ring, you know, and you Helen. Blue, you got Blue and you got, you got Blue. Okay. I think Blue is good. And uh, I love it. So, anyway. well, you were missed around here. We missed you for a couple of weeks. You're back sure. in the house. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, we did, Chris. <laughs> of course, we did. We always miss you. Uh, great show today, Drew Dog. Great job. And I want to point out to Sean, who was a little nervous directed today, first time, because we do have a lot of video. We have a lot of stuff going on. Sean, bravo to you. And was out for the day. Caden, you're 20. Screw you. And uh, <laughs> Matt Everett sitting in in the producer's chair. Ryan is gone today and tomorrow, but he'll be back for Friday's show. Yep. And tomorrow, you got to come back tomorrow because tomorrow at high noon, Donnie Edwards will be here. Donnie Edwards is the Elvis. He puts on this. Ah. He's coming in. We have the king coming in. Uh, your mom went and saw him. She did last night. She said it was fantastic. And what did your so your mom did the meet and greet? Tell tell Chris. Yeah, she waited around to meet him at the end, and she said you did so good. Oh my gosh, that was the best Elvis impression. And then he said thank you, and she goes, I heard you're going on punchlines this week. <laughs> and he goes, I am Thursday I, at noon. How the Are hell you, you coming? Know that? And she goes, I'll talk to my daughter. I'm going to be go. going. So okay. we're we're probably going to come in here okay. and sit. That's so awesome. not only oh there you go. So not only do we have Elvis coming in tomorrow, we also have. Comedic legend who last time on this show destroyed Ooh. us all. Bob Zaney will oh be here. Oh my God. Yeah. Bob yeah. Z- you, maybe you stop over for Bob Zaney if you got a minute because he is so funny. I don't know if my skin is thick I, enough for Bob Zaney. So Bob Zaney will be here. He is going to be on the Dennis Bono show tomorrow. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, tomorrow live. Oh, that's my alarm going off. Sorry. It's a new Clark song. Uh, that means I have to tweet about the premiere next Wednesday. Season premiere of Wait, What Happened? Season two coming out on Very Local. But, and then Friday on the show. We have the Neil Diamond impersonator coming in at noon. So back to back, these are the great shows you can see at the South Point. Uh, Michael Libanati, who books the shows over there, and he he sends us over uh, the entertainers when they feel like they can make it, and they are. So Elvis tomorrow, Neil Diamond on Friday, Bob Zaney also tomorrow. Big week. The real Bob Zaney. The real yeah. Bob Zaney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> it's the actual Bob. It's an impersonator of Elvis and Neil Diamond, but the real Bob Zaney. Okay. So we can't wait for Bob to be here tomorrow. And uh, you'll be back in the producer's chair tomorrow. I will. And we'll see Alex on Monday. She gave out her picks. She likes Villanova, LSU, Arkansas over, SMU, East Carolina under. And I'm not giving any other bets because I gave out the Cavalier money line, and I'm just going to stick Ooh. with that for a while. Wow. Because yeah. it was Kelsey what, down Bob. Down 22? Right yeah, that, that's what I mean. I turned it on. They were going, not so bad. And some random dude like uh, BYU tonight. Yeah. Well, yeah? Some ran- well, remember, I told oh, you. That's right. playing oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Some random dude from Ames. Yeah, and he's thinking, okay. He said that's too many. That's okay. too many points. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the show. Stick around for Sports by the Book. Yes. You'll three see these guys on the show at 3 o'clock. For now, I am gone. Happy birthday to B-Town Dummy. We'll see you next time. Lines live in Nevada every show.